on world news tonight. Controverted elections. Pakistan's election commission accused of changing the voting map in favor of XPM Nawaz Sharif. Flying accusations. Israel and Hamas accuse each other of violating the ceasefire deal. Weather warnings. Heavy rain and wild winds lash Australia as authorities warn of thunderstorms and giant hail. And stellar lineup. K-pop stars attend the Edward Asian Music Awards, announcing their story of year. This is Adhaderana World News Tonight, reporting from Colombo. Here is Anuradhi Vikramasinghe. A very good evening and you are joining us on World News. We begin this Wednesday night in India as the rescue efforts in Uttarakhand finally drew to a close. Officials in India enlisted half a dozen miners adept in rat hole mining to reach trapped workers after a tunnel collapsed, shining a light on a mining practice that has been banned for decades. When machines failed to free the 41 trapped workers in the collapsed tunnel in India's Uttarakhand state, officials enlisted the help from miners of a banned practice known as rat hole mining. The so-called rat miners are adept at borrowing in tight spaces. Half a dozen of them started working late Monday after a second drilling machine broke down with 15 meters left to reach the trapped men. Working for more than 24 hours, they split up into two teams of three with one person drilling, the second collecting the debris and the third pushing it out the pipe. And on Tuesday, rescuers successfully pulled out the workers after a 17-day ordeal. Rat hole mining is a dangerous and controversial method used to extract thin seams of coal. The name comes from its resemblance to rats digging pits into the ground. The pits are just big enough for workers, often children, to descend using ropes or ladders to extract coal, often without safety measures and proper ventilation. The practice became illegal in the 1970s, when India nationalized coal mines and gave state-run Coal India a monopoly but many small mine owners continue to employ short people or children in rat hole mining and federal authorities didn't interfere. It was used extensively in the northeastern state of Meghalaya before it was banned by an environmental court in 2014. At least 15 miners were killed in one such rat hole mine in Meghalaya after being trapped for more than a month until January 2019. Moving from India to Pakistan now, where the country is anticipating general elections next February. Pakistan's election commission was accused of changing the voting map in favor of ex-Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif. Let's take a look. The election commission of Pakistan is facing accusations of using a controversial exercise to redraw the voting map in order to favor the return of former Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif to power, amid allegations of pre-polling rigging and increasing doubts over the fairness of the coming general elections. The process of amending constituency borders, known as delimitations, follows from a census that was recently carried out, which was marred with controversies. A record of 1,300 objections have been raised across the country over the proposed changes to constituencies by the Election Commission, including over the merging of Balochistan districts of Harnai and Sibi into a single constituency, despite them being 400 kilometers apart, with no road connections and stark climate, culture and demographic differences. The election date was delayed from November to February next year on the pretext of waiting for the census results, though political opponents have alleged the delay was to give more time to the three-time former Prime Minister Sharif to return from exile in the UK and prepare to run again in the elections. Sharif is said to be a favoured candidate of Pakistan's all-powerful military who have long played kingmakers in general elections. Sharif's Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz Party has denied favourable treatment. Many accused the election commission of redrawing the map in order to directly undermine the support of Pakistan's Tehreek-e Insaf, the political party of ousted Prime Minister Imran Khan, which is still hugely popular among voters. Khan was brought to power in 2018 with the backing of the military and his elections faced similar allegations of vote rigging. However, after Khan's relationship with the military establishment sour, he was toppled from power in 2022. After Khan began publicly criticizing top military leadership, including accusing them of trying to assassinate him, he was eventually imprisoned in August. The spokesperson for the election commission said that the commission was hearing the appeals through an open court without giving further details. On to the Israel-Hamas war front next. Israel and Hamas are accusing each other of violating their ceasefire deal. Mediators are working around the clock, but with time running out on the extended truce. There's a chance only one more round of hostages will be released.
Twelve more hostages were released by Hamas on Tuesday in their ongoing ceasefire with Israeli forces. Israel's military confirmed that 10 Israeli citizens and two foreign nationals were on its territory. This Hamas video is said to show the handover to the Red Cross. 30 Palestinian prisoners were released by Israel in exchange. This began as a four-day truce, was extended to six days, and now it's possible that it could stretch even further. The heads of the CIA and Israeli intelligence met with Qatar's prime minister in Doha over what was described as the next phase of a potential deal. Egyptian officials were also present. The total number of hostages released by Hamas stands at 81 as of Tuesday. The 60 Israelis freed are all women and children. The reunions have been tearful and joyous for some families on both sides. Others don't know the fate of their loved ones. Maybe it's part of a psychological war against us. I have no idea. Um, it's working really good because the last four days has been completely nightmare for us. Ofri Bibas has been pressing for the return of her brother's family, which includes the youngest of those taken by the Islamist militants. Kafir Bibas is only 10 months old. My only brother uh, was kidnapped with his entire family from their home in New Orleans on the 7th. Um, his wife Shiri and two boys. Um, today, uh, not today, the, the reason we are talking to you today is because tomorrow is the last day of the current ceasefire. Uh, and the current deal that Israel have uh, for releasing hostages, hostages, um, and they are still, still not be, they, they still haven't been released. Israel has said it's open to continuing the extended ceasefire further if Hamas continues to release at least ten hostages per day, but with dwindling numbers of women and children in captivity, extending it beyond Wednesday may require Hamas to release some male hostages for the first time. In the meanwhile, the World Health Organization warned of a surge in infectious diseases and diarrhea across the Gaza Strip if its health system fails to be restored in the coming days. Israel's assault on the Gaza Strip has already killed more than 15,000 people, many of them in devastating airstrikes that have turned neighborhoods into rubble. But the World Health Organization warns that even more people could die from disease than from bombs if the besieged enclave's health system is not repaired. Uh, no medicines, no vaccination activities, no access to safe water and hygiene, and no food. WHO spokesperson Margaret Harris on Tuesday said the agency is already seeing a dangerous surge in diarrhea in Palestinian children. We saw a very high number of cases of diarrhea among infants. Um, and again, there was no treatment available for them. You know, if you have a, a child with diarrhea, you need to give them rehydration to, in order to keep them going until they get better. And if you're not able to do that, they can die very quickly from dehydration. Harris added that nearly three quarters of hospitals, or 26 out of 36, have shut down entirely in Gaza due to bombings or lack of fuel. Under the terms of a pause in fighting, Israel has allowed more aid to flow into Gaza including food, water, and medicine, although aid agencies say it is not enough to meet the immense needs. James Elder is a spokesperson for UNICEF. It was only coming here. I, I expected the worst in coming, and I was surprised that it was even worse than I'd imagined. Hospitals for children, hospitals, full stop, are war zones. I see children with, with horrendous wounds of war in car parks, on makeshift mattresses uh, in gardens, everywhere, doctors having to make horrendous decisions on, you know, who they prioritize. Israel has sworn to annihilate Hamas, the militant group that rules Gaza, after its gunmen burst through the border killing 1,200 people and seizing 240 captives on October 7th. Latest U.S. election updates on the road to the White House next. Republican presidential primary frontrunner Donald Trump revived calls to roll back Obamacare, also known as the Affordable Care Act, if he returns to the White House. Trump wrote on his social media platform, Truth Social, quote, the cost of Obamacare is out of control. Plus, it's not good health care. I'm seriously looking at alternatives. 
Trump's post resurrected an issue on which he and his party are vulnerable. A news poll found that when it comes to health care, voters trust Democrats over Republicans by a margin of 45 to 22 percent. The same survey found that Democrats trail the GOP on many other issues, including the economy, immigration and crime. After trying and failing to repeal the ACA and suffering for it at the ballot box, Republican candidates abandoned their calls for eliminating the law in the 2022 midterm elections, recognizing the push as a political loser. But Trump could bring it back in 2024. Trump would need to get elected in 2024 with a Republican-controlled Congress to have any chance of undoing the ACA. The Department of Health and Human Services estimates that 40 million people in the U.S. have gained coverage under the law's insurance subsidies, Medicaid, expansion and other provisions since Democrats passed the ACA and then-President Barack Obama signed it in 2010 while standing next to Biden, who was then the vice president. Welcome back. Australia's second most populous city, Sydney, has been lashed by a fast but furious storm, unleashing wild winds, large hail and heavy rain. Conditions have eased but severe weather warnings remain in place and there are disruptions to flights out of Sydney. You can't say we weren't warned. For two days the Bureau forecasting storms and this afternoon they rolled in. Incoming and with intensity, the front now unpredictable. Those in the west here taking cover. Not a part of the city spared from the series of storm cells. Planes bound for Sydney steering well clear. In the city, the downpour made for a slow trip home. Roads swamped and cars making a splash. With all that rain, something has got to give. The roof of the Piermont Coles leaking onto shelves. At Blacktown, thunderous skies kept bringing downpours. I'm shaking like a leaf. This storm has hit all of a sudden. In the Shire, Woolaware was drenched too. Much further south, the water at Lake Conjola, not where it should be. Street after street in the holiday town going under. More than 300 millimetres of rain since 9am yesterday. Went to bed, I don't know, 9, 10 o'clock. The water was normal. The, uh, woke up this morning at 6 and, yeah, the car was under. Sue Ann, Mark and their fur baby Marley had to be rescued from their home. Everything downstairs on the lower level floating around, quite frightening, no power. The rain was relentless, it just did not stop. I've never seen the lake come up that fast, uh, ever. But today's conditions offering a silver lining. This is going to uh, ease off the fire conditions right around the state for a, a few weeks at least. Further south at Cabago, Spoto was taken to the creeks. In the state's southwest, Deniliquin, near the Victorian border, inundated. The hit and run drenching over until the next one. Over in Ukraine, Mariana Budanova, the wife of Ukraine's military spy chief, has been poisoned with heavy metals and is undergoing treatment in a hospital. Budanov has become a celebrated figure in Ukraine for his role in planning clandestine operations against Russia, which launched a full-scale invasion of Ukraine in February 2022. The wife of Ukraine's military spy chief has been poisoned with heavy metals and is undergoing treatment, a spokesperson for the country's intelligence agency GUR said on Tuesday. Mariana Budanova is the wife of Kirillo Budanov, who has been prominently involved in clandestine operations against Russian forces since its February 2022 invasion of Ukraine. GUR spokesperson Andriy Yuzov confirmed the poisoning without clarifying when it took place. It was first reported by Ukrainian media outlets. Several GUR officials had also experienced milder symptoms of poisoning. Budanov himself has been the target of several attempts on his life, including a botched car bombing. In Russian media, he has become a hate figure, as his public profile has risen in Ukraine and the West, where he is portrayed as a behind-the-scenes mastermind of operations against Russia. Next in South Africa, Impala Platinum temporarily halted operations at its Rosenberg mining complex after 11 workers died and 75 were injured in what its CEO said was the darkest day in the company's history. 
Eleven workers have died and 75 been injured at a mining complex in South Africa, in what Impala Platinum's chief executive has described as the darkest day in the company's history. Impala said in a statement that the incident took place as workers were being brought to the surface at the end of their shift on Monday. The conveyance system that carries workers up and down a 1,000 meter deep underground shaft unexpectedly started a rapid descent, the company said. CEO Nico Muller said, our hearts are heavy for the lives lost and the individuals affected by this devastating incident. We will make sure that we do not leave a single stone unturned to find out what the cause is and to prevent reoccurrence. Muller added that the conveyance system had been tested prior to being used and that indications were that the core systems were active and operational. All mining operations at the Rustenburg complex in South Africa's northwest province were suspended on Tuesday as investigations got underway. An Impala spokesperson said the halt could be extended to Wednesday to allow the company time to mourn and heal emotionally. One of Mexico City's most historic churches has become one of the epicenters of the migrant crisis facing the country, with over a thousand migrants using it as a staging point on their way north to the United States. As an influx of migrants passes through Mexico on their way north to the United States, some have found a temporary home at this church in Mexico City. This migrant tent city began to form around two months ago. Now, the Church of Solitude hosts more than a thousand people on its grounds. Most are from Venezuela, Haiti, and other Latin American countries. Many bring with them painful memories from the road. We have endured rain. We have endured problems. Children have been kidnapped. Women have been raped. We're in the wild. Those that land here try to create some semblance of a normal life. Children play between the tents, and families gather for meals around open fires. You can even find a haircut or a pedicure. Some of these migrants are waiting for an appointment with U.S. Customs and Border Protection, or CBP. Others say they will take the train north, a euphemism for entering the U.S. illegally. The 17th century church is in a tough neighborhood, prone to crime. By day, it hosts regular services. But at 6 o'clock, as the sun sets, the pews are stacked away and hundreds of mattresses are laid on the cold marble floors. Migrants are ushered in, given a meal, and a safe place to sleep. Father Benito is a priest at Solitude. We have hosted up to 1,300 migrants. The numbers fluctuate. Thank God we have around 600 or 700 people, but this is volatile. Some days, the number goes up. Outside the church, there are people who have been waiting for over 15 days to get the CBP appointment. They have set up tents. The ones who enter the church get accommodation for three to five days. Some are allowed to stay for longer. Some migrants report even longer wait times for an appointment, up to several months in some cases. Against these difficult circumstances, migrants turn to their community in the tent city as a source of strength. Here we are one whole family, fighting together. Haitians, Colombians, Chinese, Japanese, we are one family. Welcome back. Paris Metro ticket prices will almost double during the 2024 Olympics. For more on that story and much more, let's take you around the world in a minute. Paris metro ticket prices will almost double during the 2024 Olympics. Residents with passes would be shielded from the temporary rise and visitors would be charged a fair price. Finland is closing all its road borders with Russia in an attempt to halt a surge of asylum seekers. Finnish government announced that it would close its last road crossing located in the Arctic Circle for two weeks. Today, Japan said it received information that a U.S. military Osprey aircraft disappeared from radar in southwest Japan the same day. In Osama and Victory Riyadh, the capital of Saudi Arabia, clinched the coveted hosting rights for the Expo 2030 World Fair. This achievement follows a string of diplomatic successes for Gulf nations. Greek Prime Minister Kyriakos Mitsotakis said that the cancellation of a meeting with his British counterpart Rishi Sunak would not affect Greek-British relations.
And that is all we have for you on World News Tonight. Join us again tomorrow as we bring you updates from across the globe. If you missed any of today's programs, you can always rewatch by catching us on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash English. Tonight, we're leaving you in Japan as K-pop fans flock to see their favorite artists at the 2023 MAMA Awards in Tokyo. Thank you for watching. Have a great night.